Alrighty, so let's get into this futures breakdown. So my bias on ES as well as NASDAQ this morning was indeed bearish. And why was my bias bearish? Well, my bias is bearish because of what the higher time frame chart was telling me. So if we go to a four hour chart on ES and NASDAQ, you can see we have pulled back into or above 50% equilibrium of that big displacement range from the other day. So we had this huge, big, strong displacement on the four hour chart. And once we had that displacement and we took out this low, took out these lows over here, we momentarily entered a discount marketplace. It's a bearish shift, but when we took out these lows, it was considered short-term cheap because that's that's what happens whenever you take out sell side liquidity like that. But at this point, what we saw happen was we pulled up above 50% equilibrium of that price range. See that? There's 50%. So that's a premium marketplace within that four hour price range. We had the bearish shift and now we put it into a premium. It's rebalanced a large, large portion of that price action. That's a very bearish signature. With that being said, with the four hour, it's bearish. But this morning, the one hour and 15 minute was bullish. And NASDAQ is, is the same exact deal. Like it's the same exact signature. It's uh, We had that big bearish shift the other day on the four hour. It's pulled up to a premium within that price range. It also took out it took out a four hour four hour buy stops right here so it's a premium marketplace after and after having that um that big shift right so that's bearish the higher time frame four hour chart was bearish that's the reason why i came into the, the day with my bias being bearish now with that being said the one hour and the 15 minute chart was bullish this morning and it actually still is bullish right now at this very moment both of these one hour charts on nasdaq and es at the time that i'm making this video um, still operating within a bullish market structure, but like we still got a nice short setup this morning on NASDAQ as well as ES. And I'm going to talk about where that was and we planned for it beforehand. Like we came into the market was the thesis this morning. This is exactly what we're looking for. The market provided it. And so here, here was a couple, there was a couple different scenarios that I told you to be aware of. So there is, you can look at this from a few different types of trades. You have short-term trades, and then you also have scalps, okay? For a short-term trade, that's a longer trade than a scalp. And with a short-term trade, it's kind of like what I do with Forex, where I execute on a one-hour chart or a 15-minute chart, and my higher time frame chart is the four-hour. So we already know that NASDAQ and ES, the four-hour had that shift since pulled up into a premium. It's ready. Like, it's ready, and it's due to have that sell-off lower it doesn't have to but it's in the prime area to do it at this point and for a short-term trade though you need the multi-time frame alignment as well on that one hour and the 15 minute because you got the four hour it's already there but you don't have the one hour like you don't have the one hour chart like the one hour is bullish but the four hour is bearish so you don't have multi-time frame alignment you see what i'm getting at so you're going to need that one hour shift and then and then you got multi time frame alignment, and then you can take it down into this low right here. As a scalper, or looking at it from a scalping point of view, you're not shooting for this low as a scalper. That's not a scalp play if you're shooting for that low. That's more of a short term trade or maybe a swing trade. But as a scalping mentality, you're not shooting for that. When, it's pri when price is all the way up here, at least you're not. So that was the very first thing that I posted was once this NASDAQ and once this. ES right here is able to have a lower time frame shift in market structure to the downside. Be ready. Be ready for it to come down and take out this low. We haven't got that yet. What would that look like? Well, we know what that looks like. We would just want to see it crack a short term low. Like, for example, see how we got the short term lows in here? We got these swing low levels. Say, so boom, we get a big displacement now. That's what you would want to see next. Because remember, we have already pulled up into a four hour premium where it's considered expensive based on the four hour range. And now we just need that change in trend on the lower time frame chart because it's bullish at the moment. We need price to show its hand first. Price showing its hand would be shown with the displacement lower. That's all. It's that simple. We would want to see a crack, these short term lows, fair value gap confirmation, strong close preferably. Then after you get that big displacement and price confirms, where would you enter as a short term trader? or as a swing trader, short-term trader or swing trader, like that's how you, that's, that's about the, how long you'd be holding that trade. If you were shooting for this low or the type of style that you'd be utilizing, 
Well, next you'd look for a move up into a premium within the displacement range, just like I do with Forex on my plays in Forex with my personal trading strategy. It's the same exact thing, but with futures. I mean, it's literally, it's that. It's literally the same exact thing almost. And it moves up into a premium. You can get a short at that point within that displacement leg. And then at that point, you could shoot for that low down there, or you could shoot for the low of the impulse leg as well. Ha take that low hanging objective. Like I always talk about, there's nothing wrong with like either of more valid PTs, either of more valid PTs. If you get that lower time frame shift on the one hour chart, we're yet to get it. It's operating within a bullish market structure still, but in the coming days, keep that on high alert. Again, it doesn't have to do it. It could just rip up and take out this high right here. Like that's trading. Anything can happen. But what I'm saying if, is it presents that scenario the ideal scenario, and we have all the signatures lining up, you have a high probability trade at your disposal at that point. And that was the mind frame for a short-term trade. That's not a scalp. Those are two different trading styles. And NASDAQ was the same exact thought process. You want to see that shift, pull back into a premium, and then come down and take out this low and have that trend continuation of that higher time frame trend. Now, the scalp perspective is a little bit different. The scalp perspective, as I said, was I'm okay with having a short setup while the 15 minute and the one hour market structure being bullish. I'm perfectly fine with that. But there are a few intricate details that you need to have noted to counter trend trade successfully. And that those details are you need to have your key liquidity pools noted on your 15 minute and your one hour. Okay. So we had that noted before the hand, beforehand. You can see on ES, I got these 15 minute swing points in here noted because, well, the market structure is bullish and it's, and also on NASDAQ, you see right here as well, we got our 15 minute swing points noted. So what I said was on mic and in the analysis section, look for that Judas swing at the bell, that Judas swing at 930, because 930 is prime time for that Judas swing. Look for that Judas swing higher to come up, take up our buy stops and to press up into that imbalance. So you can see we had this right here is 930. So right here we open up at 930 and right away we press up into an imbalance. It's already tapped up into it, but now it's rebalancing another portion of that price action. So you can see we have this big imbalance and while price is making its way up higher here, it's just slowly rebalancing this leg of price action piece by piece. And then at 930 equity bell, we had that push up and it rebalanced another portion of that price action. All right. So that's why I said at that point, be on high alert for a scalp shorting opportunity. I didn't say a short term trade. Remember, it's not it's not ready for a short term trade yet because you need that one hour, 50 minute shift. You don't have that yet. If you're scalping, you're just capitalizing on these little intricate uh, declines in price since this is a shorting scenario. You're not you know, you're not holding for these huge objectives like scalping. You're just taking your sniper shot and you're out of it. Taking a sniper shot, you're out of it. Just like that. You're not spending very much time in the trade. You're being very precise and you're just taking a stab or kind of think of it like a boxing match. You're just taking a jab and you're moving. You're taking a jab, you're moving. You're taking a jab, you're moving. You're not looking for KOs. You're just taking these little jabs and you're moving to the next. That's scalping. That's the best way I can explain it. And we had this move up at 930. That's what we were looking for. That's what we were looking for. It's pushing up into an imbalance, which is a level of resistance on the higher time frame. And I have these key liquidity pools noted. I have this low right here noted. That is a 15 minute swing point. It's also equal lows. And we didn't have any more 15 minute swing points to note until that point. And I'm going to go into a second why that's important. I think a lot of you already know why that's important because I went over it so many times, but we're going to go over it again, just so it sticks to your brain. So we get that push, we get that push up and we did ultimately, we did ultimately get that shift in market structure lower. So you can see here is 930 right here. So right at 930, we get a move lower and then we get this press up. It moves up, it takes these one minute buy stops and it presses up into that higher time frame imbalance, aka level of resistance. I didn't know price was going to reject right there. I didn't know it was going to turn on the dime and move lower off that level. I absolutely didn't. What do I let price do? I let price tell me what it wants to do. I let price tell me where it's going to find resistance. And that's price showing resistance off that area. It came up, it tested it, it rejected, and it gave a displacement lower. Okay. 
And we got a fair value gap right here, which it found resistance off of a little bit later. We got another one right here. See that? And then you got another one right here as well. See that? So that was the displacement. That was the lower time frame shift because it, see how it came down and it cracked this short term low right here. Lowest low in the middle, two hour lows on the left and the right. We cracked that level while leaving our fair value gap confirmation off of a higher time frame level, aka the fair value gap. Now, and notice it did not take out on this on this displacement lower. It didn't take out this 15 minute swing point. Now, let's say for example, because it came up into a premium right here. Take your Fibonacci from the high of the displacement to the low of the displacement. This is where it was a valid entry, and that's where I posted in the in the alert chat, in the alert chat, um, I posted it right here, like like right smack on a premium. It respected it and it came down and it hit PT, which was right here at this low. Because, um, well, that was the valid setup. But imagine with me for a second. Imagine with me for a second that this little push up into a premium didn't occur. And imagine with me that this flush right here came down and took out that 15 minute swing point. Like say it didn't give any pullback whatsoever and say it came down and took out that swing point and then it retraced higher into a premium. Would we short that? Would we short that still? We wouldn't short that still. Why wouldn't we short that still? Because you can't forget this is a counter trend trade on the 15 minute and the one hour chart. Okay. And what is more significant of a liquidity pool? That one hour or 15 minute liquidity pool or a little one minute fair value gap. I use the analogy often, like a tug of war match. You have the higher time frame, or you have the 15 minute, you have the one hour trend is extremely bullish ramping up at the moment. And it price comes down and it takes out that liquidity pool. And then on the other side of the tug of war, you have a one minute bearish fair value gap. That's it. That's the only, what's gonna win? What's gonna win? What's more powerful? That higher time frame, more times than not, it's gonna trump that lower time frame chart. You can counter trend trade that 15 and one hour like I've displayed. You can do it successfully, but you got to be aware of your key liquidity pools. You got to be aware of the, the market structure that you're operating within. You got to have that multi time frame alignment. And that's why having this multi time frame alignment, this is why understanding multiple time frames is important. So if that happened and we took out the 15 minute swing point, we put them to a premium. You wouldn't want to mess with it at that point. You would not want to be shorting it at that point, but that didn't happen. Now, did it? No, that didn't happen. It did not take out that 15 minute swing point. And we had a displacement off of a higher time frame level of resistance. And we took out a short term low, aka a shift in market structure. Then we get a premium right here on this retracement. That is your scalping opportunity. That's all it is. Again, it's just a scalp. You're not looking for some home run. You're not looking to, you know, take it all the way down to this low, all the way down here. That's not what you're looking for because you're fighting the 15 minute, one hour trend. That would be a foolish PT. Um, if like playing, playing a one minute chart, while the playing the one hour shift while the 15 minute and one hour is bullish and then shooting for this, that's a foolish PT. Don't, don't do that. You need that one hour, that 15 minute shift. If you're going to shoot for that down there and we don't got that yet. So this was the scalp opportunity. It comes up into a premium. You could have got short right there. The PT that I had listed was right here, but also you could have been more aggressive and shot for that if you wanted to, but really that low hanging objective. That's what I like that low hanging objective. Just hit it, be done, be done with the play at that point. And that's it. So that happened. And then we had the second retracement up higher right here. And again, I posted this in chat too. And I said, I don't think it's done yet. I think it's going to, it's going to turn here and it's going to come down and attack that low. And what do you know? That's exactly what happened. It actually pulled up right here, gave optimal trade entry 62%. And the reason why it pulled up and we know why it pulled up is because we had these imbalances up here serving as a draw on liquidity. Like we rebalanced that first one right here and we sold off. But we still had this one right here, and we still had this one right here that it had not tapped into. Those are draws on liquidity, guys. We took out this sell side, and now what's it going to do next? It's going to want to seek that opposing buy side. It's going to want to dig a little bit deeper before it continues its trend to the downside. And then after taking that sell side, it ramps up, and it seeks opposing buy side. It seeks opposing imbalances. It takes these buy stops. So existing shorts that are already in position, because there's a lot that are riding this thing down. They're seeing the same things that, we, that we're seeing right here, and they're trailing their position because they want to lock in them gains, right? And it comes up right here, and it takes them out. It takes out those buy stops. And we knew that was a likely scenario because of this upper draw right here. So we had this draw on liquidity. It takes out buy stops. And that's why at that point, I said, I think we can get this trend continuation to the downside. 
because it's completed its objective at that point. It took the buy stops, it rebounds the price action. It's good at this point. It's good to take lower at this point. And then you can see it did end up ramping lower and just taking out the lows and just getting destroyed. And it's no coincidence. And I want you to pay very close attention of where it found its bottom at before it had that ramp up. Where did they have that bottom at? That level we were talking about beforehand. If it took out this level on the displacement, it would just you would disregard it for a short play. Remember that? We were just talking about it. Look at where it had that big ramp up at. And it still ended up selling off, but this is where it had that big ramp up because it took 15 minute sell stops. And the market structure is bullish. Right after you took those sell stops, those equal, those equal lows, you get that huge ramp up. You get a monster ramp up because the market structure is bullish. So you gotta be very aware of your key liquidity pools whenever you're counter trend trading that 15 minute or the one hour. It can be done and I've shown that it can be done successfully, but you gotta be more nimble, okay? And so, yep, that was, I think that about, I think that about covers it.